I'm your host, Lori Creever. This program, we're going to be talking with a Minnesota author, Rod Johnson, and he's written a business book called Inside Out. Welcome to the show. Well, thank you for having me. Uh huh. In today's business environment, where we're seeing, you know, layoffs on a regular basis, we have companies, people that have been employed for 20, 30, 40 years, and their expectations of getting a paycheck every other week to pay for boats and cars and you know college and everything else their expectation is very high now all of a sudden when the breadwinner can't deliver you have a real injustice that starts to occur mm -hmm. and it's the same thing that we do with the three little pigs is we go through that relationship of trying to realign your expectations with your assumptions and mm -hmm. get those back in alignment with each other. Well, this is really interesting. So then you look at the experience of the wolf as well as the, the learning that can take place with the pigs. Yes. Well, I mean, they're equally as important. Well, I think the wolf would have. Right. He, he, he needed a lesson worse. <laughs> yeah. So how does he handle this with his family? Well, after a couple uh, major disappointments, he asks the pig for assistance. Mm -hmm. He goes, says, pig, please, I need your help. What can we do? And so the pig goes and says, well, you know what? My mother said not to make any assumptions. And should I assume that the big, wet, bad wolf's intentions are not sincere? And so they had a dialogue. <laughs> and they started to align their assumptions and expectations. Harry, Harry, Harry the pig about what each one wanted. Mm -hmm. And then eventually Harry says, you know what, I know that this farmer that has apples and turnips and he's having a heck of a problem with deer coming in and eating from his orchard. Goes, says, I bet you would be the perfect person to scare away the deer. Let me go talk to him. <laughs> so the big bad wolf gets a job and now he can go to regular meat market or whatever and bring home food on a regular basis that meets his family's needs and they both live happily ever after. Mm -hmm. Kind of. <laughs> More or less. More or less. <laughs> so what do you think is um, a good skill for, for a business person in this day and age to take away from stories like this? Would you like to see more business people being able to take a new inter interpretation of what's around them, as you did, or be, you know, we talked a little bit about becoming a storyteller as a means of packeting information mm -hmm. more easily, so you have it to draw from in your memory. I mean, what are some things that you that you see of value? I mean, besides I think, the obvious lessons, yeah, but beyond I think, that, I think the biggest the biggest process that today's organizations have is that we have many times we have organizations that function only at a very high level of intelligence. In other words, we ha we're filled with a lot of people that know how to crunch numbers, they have MBAs and stuff, and really corporations are emotional uh, entities unto themselves mm -hmm. and that mm -hmm. therefore they need to realize that not everybody thinks in numbers. Many people communication is a very important tool and yet most people have become very poor communicators because now all of a sudden we have things like email. We don't need to talk with each other anymore. We can just send off emails back and forth, you know. Yes. And in many respects, I think that has dummied down the corporation where they're less effective and we need to regain that human element of, mm -hmm. of the business life and through storytelling, through using fairy tales, through reading novels, whatever it might be, we need to have a broader application of what the world is all about. Mm -hmm. We were having an interesting talk before we started taping the program tonight about the background and history of fairy tales. I think that would be interesting for people to hear some of what you discovered yes. you know, as you were putting this together. Fairy tales, we, we perceive fairy tales as being kind of 
the versions that we know as being locked in stone, so to speak. And, and really, kind of sanitized. And it's kind of them. sanitized. Yeah. Yeah. And so if you take a look at fairy tales, fairy tales were a very oral tradition. And so they would vary from one community to, to the next community and from generation to generation, they would kind of evolve over time. But the original fairy tales really taught life's lessons. If we think of today, of all of the government programs and laws that we have on the books to protect our children and ourselves mm -hmm. from doing things, and if we do those, we get locked up in jail, there's kind of a safety net that we all kind of fall back on, and we have we, we rely on that very, very much. Mm -hmm. If we go back 200 years, those safety nets did not occur. So how did people, how did families teach their children about the potential evils of the world? And this was mm -hmm. done through fairy tales and storytelling. Mm -hmm. And so what they would tell is very, many times very gruesome stories of you know, how bad the world could be. So for example, uh, this is for not little children, so please. <laughs> but like Cinderella. Cinderella is by far the most popular fairy tale that's still in existence. Mm -hmm. And we think of the glass slipper and how, what a beautiful ending that was. It, one of the original versions of Cinderella, one of the sisters, in order to fit into the shoe, actually chopped off her toes it to fit into the glass slipper and then went off with the prince except there was a, a the prince heard in the back of his mind goes says look back behind you and see the trail of blood that is where the true princess is wow. and so he turned around the carriage and goes back and finds a true cinderella wow so that is a very powerful story and the interesting thing about fairy tales is that they they always take the concept of taking the disadvantaged and empowering them into mm -hmm. something that they never thought they could realize. So we mm -hmm. think of, you know, people with disabilities or, you know, are for some real reason can't express themselves and all of a sudden they find that power within them to really make that significant difference. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Before this, in your own life, did you notice much? stories and fairy tales? I mean, beyond sharing no. them as a dad? No. I, I was too much caught up in the business world like everybody else and, yeah. you know, thought in those terms. I never thought I was an emotional person and then I started realizing that we're all emotional people, that we all have emotional needs and that stories and fairy tales and laughter are part of fulfilling that, that emotional need that we all have in our souls. Mm -hmm. What have been um, some of the surprising responses that you've gotten, either to your book Inside Out or in going out and working with business people, or I know you do some work with displaced workers? workers yep. I think that the, the big aspect of this is, is that most people say, when we say fairy tales, we've taken fairy tales, they're kind of like, well, you know, come on, let's get real, this is, this is too simple. And then all of a sudden you go through the process and they go, oh, now I get I it. Get it. Yeah. You know, and they go, how many Rudolphs do we have in our organization? Yes. What assumptions and expectations are we making in our business right now that are not empowering us but are, you know, our weight on us on a regular basis? Mm -hmm. uh, we do a great story about Rumpelstiltskin. And Rumpelstiltskin, we tie it back into the... Why is he so unhappy, right? Isn't he that guy that's really... No, Rumpelstiltskin is the one that uh, basically weaves the baker's daughter's straw into gold. Oh. But he's sort, of a, is he sort of a troll? He's kind of like a troll type yeah. figure. But at, the, but at the end, as he goes through, he goes, says, well, he's locked up into this room with the uh, young lady. And he goes and says, you know, and he wants, and the king wants to have the straw woven into gold because her dad told her that, told the king that he could do this. Mm -hmm. And so he kind of comes in and goes, well, I've got a garment here. I'll give it to you if you can do it. So he does it. And this goes on for the third time. And the third time, she doesn't have anything else to give him. Goes, so she goes, says, well, I will give you my firstborn child if I'm married to the king. 
not realizing that she would marry the king and have the child by that. And so it's this process of, what, what do I want to say? It's you kind of step, what was very innocent to begin with, all of a sudden has an escalating impact. Mm -hmm. And we think of, one. you know, when we think of what happened with the Enrons, the MCI yes. WorldComs and all these things, how they got to where they were, where they became, uh, you know, it major was just scandals out of proportion. Out of I proportion. Mean, just, yeah. The original things were very small steps. Sure. But it was a sliding, you know, it was a slippery slope once they stepped on that, that slope because once they got you here, they could take you to the next level and the next level and the next level. Yes. So we can teach morality lessons too. Absolutely. And I, apparently, that's needed. I think you know? so. I mean, I think a lot of people are getting very humble about what has happened in this world in the last five to ten years. I agree. And that's yes. good. Yes, that's it very is, good. It is a good thing. Now I know that one of your um, one of your favorite stories also to use in teaching is about the Billy Goat's gruff. Yes, that's a good one. One we, of the main lessons that that you see from that. We all have fears, and we all have fears about getting over our our imaginary bridges. Mm -hmm. And somehow, some way, we need to figure out how to reach our goals and get over those imaginary bridges and get through our own fear. And so, and either we, fears. And we shall, I hate to cut you off Go right ahead. at the end, but that's a great note to end on because we do all need to get out of, out, off of our fear and check out Inside Out. It's just wonderful. Thank you for joining us. This is Lori Kreber saying, until next time, 30 Minutes with the Author.